Okay. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes? Good. Well, my name is Andres Junge. I come from Chile. I also work for the Consensus Amazing People. Uh, well, I'm going to talk about repetition systems. I was, I'm working on this for almost uh, five months, so this is what I've discovered. Okay. Why do we want repetition systems as, as a society? Basically, to answer questions, right? And take decisions faster. Like, if I need to know something about somebody or something, then I try to gather all the information that is available and make a decision that, like, is it worth it? Or how is it going to behave? It's like, is this person going to behave well if I gave him some money? Is he going to uh, give it the money back to me or not? Well, let's gather all the information I have on his payment history and see how it goes. Or, for example, if I have a lot of uh, different products or movies or something, and I need to decide which one to choose, well, let's leverage on the information that's available from other people that says, okay, this movie's good or this other movie's good, or, right? So, for, first question you need to address here is, if, does my app really need a reputation system? Because one really nice thing about Ethereum contracts is that enforced behavior. If you have a game, for example, or you're, or you're developing a game on the Ethereum system or Ethereum platform, and you want a reputation system so you can see if your players are going to behave well, well, ask you first, can the player, can the player cheat on your game? Because if you cannot cheat, because the contract enforcement, not, uh, there's no way to cheat on the game, so why do you need a reputation system for that, right? People are never going to misbehave. I found this book, it's a very interesting one, Building Web Reputation System by Dr. Randall Farmer. He used to work at uh, Yahoo. And he does a very good definition of reputation systems and also drains all the, or distillates all, all the reputation system in single modules. So basically the most basic thing about reputation system is a reputation statement. Reputation statement is something that somebody says or, some, or something says about someone or something, right? So we have three main concepts here. The source of the reputation statement, the target of the reputation statement, and the claim, basically what he says, right? I have some examples here of reputation statement, like Joseph seems like a developer, or Daniel told me that James Bond, James Bond's movies are the best action movies ever. We gather all this information and try to make a, a single aggregated score or number to help us make this decision. But there's one thing missing, and I think it's one thing that's really important not to miss, is context. Context is very important in reputation systems. I, if I do a reputation statement on something or someone that is in a context, I can say that Tim is a good developer, but I can say that Tim is very bad at killing spiders, for example. And does it, <laughs> yeah, you know what, what I mean, Tim. And does it does make him a bad developer? No. In the context of spider killing, he's really bad, but in the context of developer, he's still very good. So the first thing is never ever mix context. It's not a good thing. Never. We have a really bad problems in society with this. Where I came from, and I guess this is everywhere, if you lose a job and you have loans to pay, it's hard for you to pay the, those loans, right? So you get a bad payment reputation because you didn't pay the loan. But at some point, somebody think that was a good idea to mix your credit score or your payment reputation with your working or worker reputation or your reputation as a worker. So you go to a job interview and they say, well, you are okay, but you have a very bad credit score. So you don't get a job. And if you don't get a job, you don't get money and you can't pay your loans and you get in this circle that is really hard to get out. And it's a very, very complicated problem. So please, don't ever mix context. I know it's tempting to have a single score that can help us measure people in some ways to say, okay, you have a 5.2 score or 3.3 score in, in a, as a person. But that is, makes no sense at all, really, please. 
Okay, how does the um, reputation process go? First, we collect and store reputation statements for a context, specifically for context. Then we aggregate those claims to make a tar for a target to try to make a single score, right? And then we take a decision or make a decision based on that reputation score. It's okay. Collect and store reputation statement for a context, easy, in a contract. We are Ethereum developers, everything goes in contracts, right? <laughs> so we can collect and store information and store it on the, on the contract. But take this in consideration, how to code the claims. You can code it in a one to five number, you can code it as a integral number, you can code it as a one or zero, like the reputation system for like or don't like or star or don't star. Privacy, privacy is very important. Be ethical on this. If you're putting something in a permanent system, like a Ethereum platform is, you might consider that, that maybe you are saying something about someone that will be go public. So be aware, be aware of that. Aging is another problem. You are almost all young, but when I was young, I was really wild and crazy. And does that affect my reputation now? Do I have, uh, can I not change as a person? If you put something permanent in the web, that will stay forever. So consider how this con is going to be aged. Do you have a time limit or on your contract that after that your reputation claims will vanish or something? Ownership, ownership is very important. Who owns your reputation? Do you own him, somebody else? The, the source owns it? It's a very complicated subject because the owner can do something with the, if you're programming the contract like erase or not. And the cost, this is very important. In some reputation system I have investigated, uh, there's a cost on, the, on putting a reputation statement because you want to try to make it hard for people to make bad reputation statements or false reputation statements about someone. But please take in consideration that cost you for the source, for the target, is mostly you, that you want to have good reputations in some way. So try to balance this because you want to have a lot of reputations, but also you don't want to have false reputation. Okay, we have all these reputations collected and stored in the contract. Let's aggregate, let's make an aggregate function for this. In a contract, also easily. It's a contract that reads all the information and makes a score, right? Well, here we have more problems. Which aggregate function? Do I make a sum of all the numbers? Do I make an average? Well, that is not the worst problem. The worst problem is that aggregation functions are personal. It's like if somebody says this is a good movie and somebody else says if this is a good movie or a bad movie, maybe I will trust him more because, or I will use his information and not that one because I know I have some kind of like good with him or he's my friend. I know he likes the same things I like, so it's, that I use that source better than that other source. So we have some kind of weighted by source function, right? So my weights are very different than your weights. So it's a personal function. So does a general function make sense at all? You have to think about it really well. And also always consider or make it very transparent for people to see how that function is calculated because then you can decide if that function applies to you or not. I have done this little experiment yesterday night to see, uh, let's try to buy an action camera on Amazon, okay? I've chosen a lot of, I've been presented with a lot of options, all with a number from one to five or 3.8 or something. Okay, I see this is one to five stars, and then I see, okay, this system has 3.8 out of five stars. But, well, Amazon figured out that doesn't help too much people, so you need to also add how many people have rated that thing because it's different to have a five star with two persons rating it and have five stars or 4.8 having 100 people rating it, right? But also, they, th they say, okay, maybe you need the information based on how many people choose each, each kind of rating, right? So they put it, this histogram so you can decide it. Well, and after that, well, I, let, let, let me see how many, which are the people that choose five stars and why? And then I go to see every statement, and I found that, okay, Sharon Johnson, for example, says, my 12-year-old son is very pleased. Well, I'm not a 12-year-old kid. 
maybe I don't care about that statement. So that is not good information for me. So maybe I will say, okay, this is a good product for a 12-year-old kids and not a good product for me. Well, then the next, last step is to make a decision based on the reputation score. Well, let's make a contract that reads the score and take the decision. Well, I don't recommend that at all. Why? As I have pointed out in the last example, it's a very human thing to make this decision. You don't need, I don't use just the score, I use a lot more of other things. I basically first started with the score, then go to the histogram, then go to each single statement. And then decide this statement is not useful, this statement is useful based on source, based on the content. I don't think that is very easy to program on a contract. I think this is more in the area of uh, artificial intelligence or something like that. So in my recommendation is more leave the human to make the decision and not try to make the contract make the decision. So a little recap. First, think about does my DAP need a reputation system or not? It's really important. Ethereum enforces behavior. So maybe you have users or things that doesn't misbehave, so you don't need a reputation system at all. Again, don't ever, ever, ever mix context. It's not a good idea. It makes a lot of problems for society. Aggregate functions, make sense or not? Do I need to present the user all the statements so he can make a, an aggregate function or a score? Or, does it, or can I make a general function as a recommendations for the user, right? And last, leave decisions to the human. At least these decisions that are very hard at some point, don't leave it to contracts. Gracias. Yeah.